Hi guys, in this video I'm going to explain the granular oscillator we introduced in SynthMaster 3. To start off, I'm starting with an init preset and I'm replacing oscillator 1 with a granular oscillator. So when I do that, the granular oscillator loads the first sample in our database, which is this BT Mediterranean pad. So let's start exploring the parameters of the granular oscillator and let me explain what granular synthesis does. <laughs> So as you see, when I play the sample, I see some lines here. Uh, they indicate uh, the position of the grains that are actually playing. Basically, in granular synthesis, we have um, little audio snippets, uh, which are called grains, playing um, together. We can have up to 32 grains um, per voice uh, for each oscillator and we can go up to 16 voices per oscillator so uh, 16 um, times 32 we can have up to 512 grains um, running simultaneously for a single oscillator playing basically so to explain um, the granular synthesis better let's uh, load a different um, sample. Oh, by the way, um, granular uh, oscillator can load multi-samples or single samples. Waveforms are not allowed. Um, I'm going to um, load a factory um, sample, like a boat string. Let's, for instance, uh, load one of these. Yeah, this sounds good. Now I will just lower these values first and explain one by one what each does. <coughs> so um, I set the number of uh, the number of maximum grains to four, which means um, the oscillator can play up to four grains at a time. And these um, positions that I see are the playback positions of the grains that are playing. So. Uh, here I have an important parameter, uh, which is called the density. The density right now is uh, around 16. It can be between 0 and 31. So for instance, let's have a lower density like 2. And let's start playing. As you see, I, I only uh, see two lines here because the density is set to 2. It's almost 2, 1.95. The density is set to 2, so that only 2 grains at a time can play. And here uh, I see a length parameter. So basically this, um, this uh, lets us adjust the length of each grain. Basically, um, each grain uh, has a certain uh, length and this length is between 5 milliseconds and 5 seconds and by default it's like it's at the mid value which is like 150 milliseconds so let's for instance make this 50 milliseconds and let's continue going down Okay, so as you see, I have two grains running. And now I'm going to increase the density. Let's increase it to four. And let's continue increasing. Let's, for instance, make it eight. 
But as you see, since I set my maximum grains to four, uh, the, the number of uh, grains playing does not increase. But if I increase this to eight, Now my maximum, uh, mm, since I increased the uh, maximum number of grains to eight, now I can play eight simultaneous grains at a time. And I can visually see uh, their positions here. And I can continue increasing. Let's make it 16. And let's also make this 16. Okay, so uh, so much for the length and the density parameters. Now, there, there's another important parameter, which is the position. I'm going to use the mod wheel to change the position. This is the start position of the grains, basically. And the position, uh, the position is between the start and end sample. Let's um, start playing now and change the position. As you see, I'm changing the mod wheel value. And by changing the position, it's sort of like um, changing the playhead of a tape. Together with the length parameter, we also have envelope settings uh, for our grains. So that um, during this duration, which is for instance one second right now for each grain, um, during this one second, the grain, uh, the, the grain envelope basically rises, stays at the peak level, and then it decays. And we can control the attack time and the release time, which are basically, uh, which are basically um, a certain ratio of this grain length. For instance, let's make the attack time 0 0.5 and the decay time 0 0.5 so that um, this is going to be um, 0 0.5 seconds and the decay, the attack and the decay, they will both be 0 0.5, half seconds. I can change these values, for instance, let's make them minimum. And this is sort of like a rectangular window now. which doesn't sound good. So let's have some attack and decay like this. I can also play with the slopes of these attack and decays. I can also have um, lots of uh, randomization um, options for grain parameters. I can randomize the volume, pan, direction, um, detune, position, length, and the start of each grain. These are percentages between 0 and 100%. So let's, for instance, um, set them to 25%. As for the direction, uh, by default, it's at 100%, uh, which uh, corresponds to um, forward play playback. So it always plays forwards. But uh, by lowering this value, I can also enable reverse playback. So at the minimum value, it always plays uh, reverse. And at the maximum value, it always plays forward. So let's, for instance, set it at the medium value so that uh, it's 50-50. I can increase these randomizations. And 
let's see how the sample plays now. There's also um, another important setting for the grain envelope. There is this key tracking parameter here. If I enable key tracking, um, the sample um, the sample um, grain length will um, change when I um, press a different key. So when I pr press a higher key, uh, the sample uh, the grain length will uh, lower, and I press a lower key the grain length will increase. It will go higher. Let's enable key tracking. But for that, let me lower these randomization values. Let's also decrease the number of maximum grains. without key tracking and this is with key tracking so yeah you can use this key tracking to change the length uh, um, according to the key pressed, and yeah, let's also let's also again increase the randomization values. And let's look at the sample. I'm going to increase the maximum grains. And we also have uh, the voices settings uh, for our granular oscillator, just like we have the voices settings for other types of oscillators. We can uh, apply spread uh, values for pan, detune, position, length, and start. But for that, let's first increase this number of voices. For instance, let's make it four. And I'm going to increase the pan spread and the detune spread now. I will also increase the position spread, the length spread, and the start spread so that um, each voice uh, starts from a different position and it has a different grain, grain length. And I, I will also play with the detune curve here and I will change the mix settings. Let's increase the release. Let's also try um, the granular oscillator with a vocal sample. Okay, we have some vocals like this yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, sample. Yeah. So immediately uh, we turned this sample into a choir. And I will also increase this pitch drift for these voices. There's too much uh, pitch uh, 
spread. So let's decrease that. Let's also make this forward and decrease this detune. We can also increase the voices and the maximum number of grains. And if you look at these numbers, uh, for each os oscillator voice playing, we are actually playing 32 times 8, 256 grains per voice. For instance, if you look at the CPU meter, it's 10%. This, CP, this is per core, uh, CPU core. So for three voices, I'm using 10% uh, of one single CPU core. Increase the numbers increase. Interesting. It's thirteen per thirteen percent. No, it's ten percent for three voices. I'm sorry because the number of voices were were more than three. So yeah, I mean the CPU usage is also really uh, optimal. I would say for a granular oscillator like this, so I can play two hundred fifty six grains per voice and still get this much low CPU. So um, this is my um, introduction for the granular oscillator. I hope uh, it was helpful. Thank you for listening to me, guys, and thank you for your support.